Organic extraction is the analytical technique that separates organic compounds based on their acidity or basicity. And the way that it works is based on the fact that if you are going to put organic compounds or an organic mixture along with some aqueous or water containing compound, the organic layer will always rise to the top. Remember that oil floats on water and so your organic compounds will rise to the top and you'll have an aqueous layer underneath that is rather polar. And essentially what you do with extraction is you have some mixture of organic compounds and they have to be fairly specific. One of them will likely be a weak acid like an alcohol. One of them will be a strong acid, something like a carboxylic acid. In fact, carboxylic acid is your go-to strong organic acid that you'll almost always see in every extraction. And a base that is organic, and that will usually be an amino group. And so you have a weak acid, a strong acid, a base, and some sort of non-electrolytic compound, something that is neither acidic nor basic, which will often be your alkanes, perhaps a cycloalkane or something like that, but an organic compound which does not participate in either acidic or basic activity. It doesn't donate or receive protons, and so therefore it will not turn charged in any situation. Then what you do with this mixture is you essentially pour through different known acids or bases, and those will either protonate or deprotonate your unknowns. And the way that it usually works is that first you'll pour through a weak base. And the weak base will take, for example, your carboxylic acid, the strongest acid that you have, and it will deprotonate it. And so instead of being COOH, it will now have a COO minus functional group. And when that happens, notice that now it carries a charge. It's now polar. And because of that, the carboxylic acid, when it's deprotonated, will now move into the aqueous layer because it's polar. The next thing you'll do is you might add an acid which will protonate your amino group. It will give a proton to that base. And the base will now have an H plus and it will have a positive charge and thus it becomes polar and it will move from the organic layer into the aqueous layer. And then remember that we've already taken out our strong acid by putting in a weak base. Usually sodium bicarbonate is the one that does that. We've already taken out our strong acid, but now with that one gone, we can take out our weak acid by pouring in a stronger base, maybe something like sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And that will now deprotonate your weak acid, perhaps an alcohol. And then that will go from an OH functional group to an O minus functional group. It will turn polar. And then because it's polar, it will now enter your aqueous layer. And so essentially what you do is you run through a sequence of known acids and bases. And those will cause your organic compounds to react in some way. Your acids will be deprotonated. And when they're deprotonated, they get a negative charge and move into the aqueous layer. Your bases will be protonated, and when they get a proton, they will get a positive charge and be polar enough to move into the aqueous layer. And then what you'll be left with is your non-electrolyte that doesn't act as an acid or a base, and that will be the only thing remaining in your organic layer. You'll often see extraction set up with something like this where there's a valve, and essentially after running each of these acids or bases, the inorganic acid or base that you're putting through there, usually what you'll do is you'll have the aqueous layer and you'll use the valve to drain out the aqueous layer. And so each time, and you can do this with separate flasks, each time you're essentially removing the one component that you made react with your acid or base. And so if you remove the alcohol, you'll essentially have an aqueous layer of water and alcohol. And so you'll now collect that in a collecting flask and you can remove that and treat that as a sample of only deprotonated alcohol functional groups. But the whole idea with extraction is that by running through a series of weak acids and weak bases or perhaps strong acids and strong bases, you're selectively protonating or deprotonating 
one of your organic compounds and as soon as that happens it takes on a charge and it moves away from the organic layer which is uncharged hydrocarbon like material and into the aqueous layer which is polar and it could be set up like this with a valve it could be set up separately where perhaps you put in a pipette and you remove the aqueous layer after each trial but realize that every time you move one of these organic compounds into the aqueous layer you're often going to want to remove it from there so that you have a fairly pure aqueous sample containing one of these organic compounds that you've extracted out. And so we'll now go through an example of an extraction and it will be very clear how we are separating all of these components based on their acidity or basicity. Now we're going to run through an example of an organic extraction. And what you're doing with an extraction is you have an organic mixture containing several components and you have a series of extraction agents. A lot of times they won't tell you which one is which, so we'll have to go through and identify them. In our organic mixture, we have p-toluic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. Whenever you see a carboxylic acid, that will be the strong organic acid in your environment. So we'll just call this one the strong acid. Diethyl ether, usually you see that as a solvent, and in this case, it isn't going to be acting as an acid or as a base. And so this will be your non-electrolyte, non-electrolyte. 2-propanol, or more commonly known as isopropyl alcohol, is going to be your alcohol group, which is going to be your weakly acidic organic compound. And so this will be a weak acid and one aminobutane, or it might be known as N-butylamine, is going to be your base. And you know that it is the base because it has its amino group, and that is the most common organic base you'll encounter. So this will be your base. Uh, you could also say that it's a weak base, but we don't need to specify that. We can just say that it is a base, and because it's an amine, usually amines are going to be the organic bases that you're separating with an extraction procedure. The next thing we have to look at is our extraction agents and figure out which one is which. Here we have sodium bicarbonate and at first maybe it's good to recognize that that is going to be a weak base. You can also look at what else you have available. Here we have sodium hydroxide which you know is a strong base and that can just confirm our reasoning that the sodium bicarbonate is going to be a weak base and the NaOH is going to be our strong base. So we'll put here weak base and here we'll have our strong base. And then you probably already know with HCl hydrochloric acid that is one of our go-to strong acids that we'll encounter. And so this will be a strong acid. And now we've identified all of the organic components by their electrolyte category and we've identified our extraction agents in the same way. So our next step then is to pour one of these into our mixture and in the process we'll be deprotonating or protonating one of these components. And so why don't we start by working with one of the acids we have in order to simplify our discussion of that. We have two choices here. We have a weak acid and a strong acid and we can deprotonate one of these. But because we want to clarify this and we want to be very specific, remember that the strong acid is going to be much easier to deprotonate than our weak acid will be. And so in order to do that we need to run something through here that will cause the strong acid, the p-toluic acid, to be deprotonated, but will not have those effects on our weakly acidic isopropyl alcohol. And so clearly to deprotonate an acid we need to use a base. And in order to distinguish between the strong and weak acid, we have to use something that will make only one of them react. And that thing is going to be our sodium bicarbonate. Remember that whenever you see sodium attached with something it's going to dissociate and yield something else. So this will yield an HCO3 minus, which is the anion that is produced with your sodium bicarbonate. And this is a weak base, 
And because it's a weak base, it will only be able, or at least preferentially be able, to deprotonate our strong acid without deprotonating our isopropyl alcohol. And so first we will pour through our weak base, the sodium bicarbonate mixed with water. And what will happen there is you will now deprotonate this p-toluic acid and then it will end up with a negative charge. And as soon as it gets that negative charge, it will now enter the aqueous layer. And because of that, now it will no longer be in the organic layer of our solution. And so we've taken one thing out of that mixture and we've done that by using our weak base here. So now we've used the weak base in order to deprotonate the strong acid and distinguish it or separate it from the other components. Now what we'll do is we'll go in, we will remove the aqueous layer perhaps by draining it through a valve or by pipetting it out. And then we'll do the next step of our extraction procedure. Here we have two choices. We can either use our strong acid, which will protonate our base, or we can use our strong base, which will deprotonate our weak acid. Let's first talk about why we don't use the NaOH first. If we were to use the NaOH first, then it wouldn't distinguish between the strong acid or the weak acid, and so we wouldn't be able to separate those two components. A strong base will deprotonate all acidic species in our organic mixture. So first we went in with the weak base in order to separate only the strong organic acid and leave the isopropyl alcohol intact. Now we have a choice. We can either run the hydrochloric acid or the sodium hydroxide. Let's just go with the HCl first. The HCl will put in there and that is a very, very strongly acidic species. And so that will produce a bunch of protons. And what will happen here is this will now protonate the amino group. So now it becomes uh, something with an NH3 plus functional group. As soon as it does that, now it is getting a positive charge and it becomes very polar, polar enough that it can enter into our aqueous layer. So now we've done that and we can separate that aqueous layer with the valve or with the pipette and we have now eliminated the base from our environment. So now look at what we've done. We started out with a mixture of many different organic compounds. First we put in our sodium bicarbonate and that was a weak base that only deprotonated the strong organic acid which was our carboxylic acid. And then we put in our strong HCl acid and that protonated our base here and so now that became polar and entered the aqueous layer. And so now we have finished working with this one and what we're left with is our strong base. Now we take our sodium hydroxide and that'll probably be in a solution with water and we will pour that into our organic mixture which contains the diethyl ether and the isopropyl alcohol. And the NaOH is going to produce a bunch of OH minus species that now are going to be very, very basic and enough to deprotonate this alcohol OH functional group and instead turn it into an O minus functional group. And as soon as that happens, it's the same thing. Once you have a charge, once you have a formal charge, that thing is now polar enough to escape from the organic layer which is floating on top into the aqueous layer which is beneath that. And so now by adding our NaOH, we've now extracted out the isopropyl alcohol. And what is left is only going to be the diethyl ether. And so once we separate that isopropyl alcohol, what we'll have is we'll have an aqueous layer containing the anion of the isopropyl alcohol. And above that, we will have the organic layer containing now only the diethyl ether. And that's how extraction works. Essentially what you do is you run through a series of extraction agents. And when you have a choice, you always wanna run the weaker one through before you run the stronger one through. And the reason for that is because when you put the weak base in, it only deprotonates the strong acid and if you were to do the strong base first, it would deprotonate everything, and so your separation wouldn't be as tidy. 
And so if you have a weak base and a strong base, you always put the weak base in first. And that will get rid of the strong acid because it deprotonates it and it moves from the aqueous into, or from the organic into the aqueous layer. Then you can put in your strong base and that will deprotonate your weak acid and that will move from the organic to the aqueous layer. You put in the strong acid in order to protonate your organic base, which will usually be some sort of amino group. And so there you see the nitrogen there, which is the telltale sign that you're dealing with an organic base. And every time you do one of these things, whatever gets deprotonated or protonated will be polar enough to move into the aqueous layer, and whatever is left over will be the remaining organic compounds. And so that's extraction, and it's fairly straightforward. The main thing to realize is that you're essentially putting in a weak base in order to deprotonate a strong acid. You're putting in a strong acid in order to protonate your base, and you're putting in a strong base to deprotonate your weak acid, but you want to do that as one of the later steps so that you don't just deprotonate everything at once. Anything that gets protonated or deprotonated will be polar enough to move into that aqueous layer, and then you can remove that aqueous layer to have a sample containing either your p-toluic acid, your n-butylamine, or your isopropyl alcohol. And anything that has not yet been protonated or deprotonated will remain in the organic layer on top, one of which will never end up gaining or losing a proton and which will probably remain as your organic layer after you've done the entire extraction procedure. So when you think extraction, realize that what you're really thinking about is the separation based on the acidity or basicity of various components of an organic mixture. And once you grasp that concept, then these will become fairly straightforward procedures as long as you realize that you have to throw in the weak base before you put the strong base in there. And that simply makes it more selective and it makes your extraction more accurate. And that's really all you need to know when it comes to extraction.